What's up, YouTube? This is LDS Reliance. I know this is going to surprise some people, but I don't hate lithium. And today I'm going to show you a lithium battery that I picked up. It's actually a lithium iron phosphate battery. Uh, Mike Collier sent it to me from Lithium Storage in Utah. This particular battery is a prismatic cell lithium iron phosphate battery. This battery is actually pretty small. As you can see, I've got a sealed lead acid battery there that's an 8 amp hour. For size comparison purposes, this one's only about a little under 7 pounds, and an equivalent 25 amp hour battery would be 18 or 19 pounds. So substantially smaller, uh, higher energy density, but much lighter as well. This battery is, on its high side, will be about 14, 14.4 14 volts. That'll be its highest charge. Lowest would be about 10 volts. It's most natural in about the 12 to 13 volt range, and I just tested this one a few minutes ago. It's a little over 13 volts. This thing will provide 8 amps on a load for quite a while. Um, it can actually spike to 50 amps for under 30 seconds, um, which is pretty stinking impressive. That's much better than a lead acid battery would be able to do. The he Mike told me that the the voltage will sag a little bit, but then it'll come back up. So a lead acid battery will just sag and it'll stay down there. Um, but under a high load, this battery will sag for briefly and then it'll start creeping back up to full voltage. So because this battery is only four cells, there's no, no it's not necessary to equalize this. So the charging program would just be uh, eight amp hours or, or eight amps for three hours no floating, nothing like that, just shut it off after three hours. So lithium storage doesn't actually sell batteries normally this small. Um, I picked this up because I've been talking with Mike for a while and have been re really interested in some, some newer technology batteries to start playing with and uh, he was happy to help me out. Um, so he sent me this battery, it's obviously it's not super pretty or uh, you know, they wouldn't sell this directly to the public like it, like it is in this form, but it's, it's just fully functional and it's, it'll accomplish the purpose of showing you what it can do. So this company specializes in portable power systems um, for, you know, remote camera shoots, remote uh, communications equipment, things like that, uh, backup systems for, you know, uh, telco and, and computer and, and uh, networking and stuff like that, and then also golf carts. Um, they've, they convert um, golf carts to lithium batteries to save on weight and provide longer between charges. Uh, they're dabbling in some cars, um, but then also some off-grid uses as well. Now the chargers that they sell on their, their site are much more expensive. These are industrial type chargers and for, for much bigger batteries. The smallest battery they actually sell on their site is 100 amp hours. So. None of those would really be appropriate for this battery. So over time, I'm going to try to figure out how to charge this thing. I've got the NOCO Genius that will charge this. I'm going to try that at some point. I'm also going to start experimenting with charge controllers. So I'm getting an MPPT controller for my off-grid, uh, my solar shed. And so we'll experiment with how to play with those settings to charge a lithium battery safely and so forth. However, this is obviously lithium iron phosphate, so it's much safer than lithium ion. Anyway, that's enough talking. I'm going to show, it, show you what it'll do under a load. So I'm going to bring out a fan, and uh, which will be able to provide at least 8 amps of load on this thing, and we'll see what it does. Okay, so I have a test rig hooked up here with a 250 watt plus fan here, which will give it a good 20 plus amps of load. I've got the battery hooked up to a pretty good efficient inverter so we don't have to worry about anything like that really big fat cables so we're not worrying about any voltage drop or excess resistance and then i don't know if you're gonna be able to see this but i've got a voltmeter connected to see how how much it sags and then i have a kilowatt meter on here and i'll show you you'll have to move the camera around to different angles to to see all of this but basically i want to see you know this is just a little tiny battery i've i've used this stuff in my Willet Solar series with big, heavy 12 volt deep cycle batteries, lead acid batteries, um, to run this type of stuff in the past. So let's see if the little baby lithium battery will do that. So here we go.
Okay, that was on high and it sagged down about two tenths of a of a volt. So that's not bad at all. Lead acid battery battery would have sagged significantly more than that, depending on its its size. But probably half a volt or so under that kind of a load. Next. Okay, so one last test before we go here. I'm going to test it with a supersized test of a mini refrigerator. Now these things don't draw a lot of amps um, while they're running, but when they start up, they, they pull a lot of current. So if this thing can handle that, I will be very impressed. So here we go. Let's see, we got it hooked up here. I'm gonna turn it on. I hear the compressor motor. Didn't skip a beat and the voltage didn't even drop all that much. It didn't even get below 13 and now it's back up to 13.2. So anyway, sorry for the sniffles there. Um, allergy season. Anyway, really, really freaking cool. I'm really excited about this battery. I can't wait for this technology to, to drop in price and to become more accessible and to become easier to work with solar because this is definitely the future, guys. Thanks for watching. There's a lot more cool battery stuff where that came from. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any.